So when we reach the day of Eid, this is all the forerunners or the things that you must prepare yourselves with. Then on the day of Eid, they are the Sunan of Eid. Sayyid ibn Musayyib from the major tabi'een who died in 94 after the Hijrah. Radiyallahu ta'ala, he said that the Sunan of Fitr are three. Walking to the Musalla, walking to the prayer area. Eating beforehand before you leave your home and performing the ghusl. These are from the Sunan of Eid. And there are many others also. There are many others also. As Ibn Hajar reported that the Abdullah ibn Umar used to wear his finest clothes. The best of what he had he used to wear on Eid. Also applying fragrance for the men. That a person walks to Eid and he makes the takbirat of Eid which should not be abandoned. Rather our streets should resonate with the takbirat. Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned, وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا حَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ And that you mention the takbirs for Allah on Yawm Al-Eid. For Allah having guided you so that you may be grateful to Him. Ibn Abi Shayba reported that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud that he used to make the takbirat on Yawm Al-Eid with the wording Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. And it is reported from Ibn Umar that the takbir is from the time that you leave your home up until you reach the musalla. And then when you sit at the musalla, you sit in your prayer area and you continue to make the takbirat up until the imam, he arrives to lead the prayer. These are the takbirat of Yawm Al-Eid. This is what the people of Sunnah should know. And this is what we must implement. Teach your children, your wives and your families to make these takbirat. If you live far away, Come and park your car somewhere and leave some space for you to walk. Why? Because as you're walking, you're making the takbirat. You have more time. And you are following the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ in walking. And when the Prophet ﷺ used to walk to the Eid prayer, he used to take a different route back. And some of Ahlul Ilm, they have said, this is so that he could give salam to one group of people as he's walking there. And salam to another group of people as he's walking past, walking back. This was Rasulullah. Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa did not pray the Eid prayer in the Masjid on Yawm al-Eid. Masjid al-Nabawi. He never prayed in Masjid al-Nabawi. He prayed outside. We've been praying outside, my brothers and sisters, since the early 90s. And now everyone else wants to jump onto the bandwagon. Why? Because they can make money out of the outdoor Eid. We were making the Eid prayer outside, my brothers and sisters, in the early 90s. In small Eid Park in the middle of winter, in minus one and minus two. We never left that sunnah. And inshallah, we will not leave that sunnah. The Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, prayed the Eid prayer outside, so we pray outside. Barakallahu feekum. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شرف المرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد. When you pray the Eid prayer, my brothers and sisters, pray with Ahlul Sunnah. Don't follow the pomp and the glitter of Ahlul Bid'ah and the Hizbiyoon. Come to Ahlul Sunnah and pray with Ahlul Sunnah. Don't look at the numbers that they have or the fun. And frolics that they have on Yom Al Eid. Pray with the people of Sunnah. That is your duty to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That your companionship and your nearness 
is with Ahlu Sunnati wal Jama'ah, those upon the madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah. And on Yawm Al-Eid, everyone goes out. The men, the women, the children, the virgins, the menstruating women, everyone goes out to Eid and that is the most correct position of Ahlul Ilm. That the Eid prayer is for men and for women and for young and for old. Umm Atiyya radiyallahu anha said, we were commanded to go out for Eid. Who's the we? Women. We, the women, were commanded to go out to the Eid. The virgin in her veil, even the menstruating woman, the woman on her monthly cycle, all of them were commanded to go out for Yawm Al-Eid. Even the woman who came and she said, I don't have a veil, I don't have a jilbab. So the other women would loan their jilbab to her for that day so she can go out and be with the believers. Umatiya said they would stay behind, meaning the menstruating women. They would stay behind the other women and they would make takbir and make dua, which is another proof that the woman on her menstruation is not prevented from the dhikr of Allah. She is not prevented from dua. And in the most correct position of Ahlul Ilm, such as Shaykh Al Albani and others, she is not prevented from reading the book of Allah either. Nor is she prevented from entering the masjid if she wishes to do so. So Umm Atiyah, she said that those menstruating women, they would stay behind the other women, meaning in the musalla. And they would make takbir and they would make dua. Along with them hoping for a reward that is better than the day that they were pure. They would make dhikr and dua, hoping that Allah would reward them. Better than the reward that they would receive if they were not menstruating. This is the day of Eid. So when you make the Eid, the Eid prayer, of course, when the Imam comes, he makes the takbir. So you make the takbir after the Imam. After he has made the first takbir, you will recite to yourselves the dua al-istiftah, which is the opening dua of the prayer. Then the imam will make seven further takbirs. After that, you will seek refuge in Allah as you would do in the normal prayer with the isti'adha, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajim. Then you will say the basmala, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Then the Imam will recite Fatiha, and you will listen to him recite. Then in the second rakaah, he will stand and make the takbir. Then he will make five further takbirs, and then he will recite again. This is the Sunnah of the Eid prayer, and that is even though there is some difference amongst the scholars, that is the preferred position of Sheikh Al Albani. And Imam al-Baghawi rahimahullah ta'ala affirmed it. My brothers and sisters, Yawm al-Eid thereafter is a day of eating and drinking. It is a day of joy and happiness. It is not a day to do that which is haram. It is not a day where you abandon the prayer. It is not a day to listen to music. It is not a day, my sisters, to throw off your hijab. It is not a day where you go out to the Eid prayer and you are beautifying and putting makeup on your face for other men to see. It is not a day, my brothers, where you allow yourselves to become musbil. You allow your garments to fall below your ankles. Keep your garments above your ankles. For whatever, as the Prophet ﷺ said, is below the ankles, is in the fire. Major sin. Min al-kabair. Why? Because there is a punishment attached to the garment falling below the ankles. My sisters do not leave the home perfumed. For the Prophet ﷺ forbade that. Do not leave your homes in high heels. 
for that was from the traits of jahiliyyah that has been forbidden in islam your beautification my sisters is for your husbands and for your families and for your mahrams it is not for strange men it is not a day of courting it is not a day of free mixing Don't let your guard down on this day that you go and visit relatives and you freely mix your men and your women are mixing with each other and they are not mahram to each other. It is not a day of qaza where you find young men or even old men who should be should have more shame that grown men are having qaza shaving the sides of their heads. As big grown men, you should be ashamed of yourselves. What kind of example are you setting for the youth? That men will queue, and young men will queue outside the hairdressers and the barber shops, waiting for the side of their heads to be shaved and a tuft of hair to be left on top. That is imitation of the kuffar that the Prophet ﷺ forbade. He said, either keep all of it or remove all of it. This is not a day to set bad examples. Follow the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam for he is the finest example to be followed. Mix with your families, visit your relatives, be with your parents, be with your brothers, be with your sisters, be with your children. Take the day off work and spend some time with your family. Give gifts. Wear your finest garments. This is how the believer should be upon that day. Let the girls sing. As Abu Bakr as Siddiq, when he walked into the house of Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Aisha said there were two girls that were singing, singing songs of bravery and courage. So Abu Bakr, he reprimanded them. He said, "What is this?" the sounds of shaitan in the house of allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said leave them every people have their eid this is our eid aisha radiyallahu anha said that i was with the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam looking into the masjid because the apartments of rasulullah looked into the masjid and she said that the abyssinians had come and they were playing with their daggers they were doing their war demonstrations with their daggers and she said i was leaning upon the shoulder of allah's messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam looking at them on yawm al eid it is a day where you can seek entertainment that is halal no harm even in the masjid it is permitted but it is not a day of haram it is a day of ease meaning that you don't fast but you do pray it is not a day where you abandon the forbidding of the evil If we as elders set the good example for our youth they will follow inshallah but if you are the one who is having these strange haircuts if you are the one who is wearing effeminate clothes that are tight across your body that normally was the trait of the women in their homes for their husbands and you are the ones who are following this uh, have become ins- enslaved to fashion Then how are the what are the youth going to do? Brothers, wear the garments of Islam of the Muslimin that are from the culture of the Muslims. Wear the thawb, wear the salwar kameez, wear the garments of the Turks and the Syrians that are known white trousers, open garments. The garments of the Kurds. These are from the cultures of Islam. What does this skin tight clothing got to do with Islam? these drain pipes and these tight garments youth your elders especially set the example wear garments that represent the culture of islam the identity of the muslims what do you want to follow them for in america and europe and the fashions of paris and milan they are your example follow barakallahu feekum the traditions of islam and the muslimin 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aid the Muslims. Enjoy the day of Eid. Make it a day of happiness and joy for yourselves and your families. Go out, do something. Get some good food. Have a time of happiness. But do not be disobedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us and our families. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in.